Good morning. Welcome to worship on this uh, Baptism of Our Lord Sunday. It's the very first Sunday of Epiphany. Uh, seven weeks from now, we will be beginning Lent. So, uh, time flies when you're having fun. I want to welcome you this morning and remind you to please uh, fill out the uh, attendance card that's in, in the bulletin. It's really important that you do that so we know that you were here. We can keep record of that and also that you communed with us as well. I want to say thank you to those who were here yesterday morning to help take down uh, our decorations from Christmas. They, I wish that could have lasted longer, uh, but it was a beautiful sanctuary uh, for the time that we had that up. So I want to say thank you to all who helped put those up and take those down. I know that's a lot of work. Uh, in two Sundays, two Sundays from now, we will have our annual meeting uh, at 930 and I want to give you formal notice of that. Uh, orally, it should have been in uh, the bulletins as well. The annual report is in the narthex. And uh, for your reading pleasure, one per household. So take an annual report and study up, study good, and then come back in two weeks. And uh, we'll proceed with the budget. Um, as we do this time of year, uh, just a reminder that uh, your pastor is a real flake. You know where I'm going with this, right? And if you're an A through L, you are also a flake. And we get to uh, declare victory already, I think, because... Um, Uh-oh. Oh, it's a puff. Oh, I'll be darned. How are you, Mr. Puff? I am fine. I'm fine. Um, if you'll notice on the uh, trophy out there, yes. uh, last year the Puffs won. And oh, that's four, right. We felt sorry for so, you and, and, nah, and donated. It's called the trifecta. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> We're going for the trifecta. Okay, all right. So, well, cereal, cereal bowl. is the cereal bowl this month. Mm -hmm. And how many weeks do we have? We have till February 2nd, which is Super Bowl Sunday. We'll count up all the uh, ounces in each one of the boxes and add those up. And then we'll post it on our website like we did last year. Awesome. So we want people to go to the website to find out who wins. And this is an exciting uh, project for Kuntz Pantry yes. and good awareness for that pantry, but also uh, what a wonderful gift that is of right. cereal for. Last year it took us a truck and a vehicle to get all the all the cereal down to them. So we really awesome. appreciate your support. Well, thank you for yeah. for sponsoring that as well Absolutely. and for your help, Rick. So go, go flakes. Go Flakes, all right, how many do we have? How many flakes do we have? Woo! How many puffs? Oh, we don't care. Okay. <laughs> Thank you for having a little fun with that and for uh, your donations to the Kuntz Pantry. Those are all of our announcements. And again, I uh, welcome you to worship. Let's uh, stand as we prepare our hearts and minds with our remembrance of baptism. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the fountain of living water, the rock who gave us birth, our light, and our salvation. Amen. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are clothed with God's mercy and forgiveness. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism together. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters, and by your word you created the world calling forth life in which you took delight. Through the waters of the flood, you delivered Noah and his family. And through the sea, you led your people, Israel, from slavery into freedom. At the river, your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By water and your word, you claim us as daughters and sons, making us heirs of your promise and servants of all. We praise you for the gift of water that sustains life. And above all, we praise you for the gift of new life in Jesus Christ. Shower us now with your spirit and renew our lives with your forgiveness, grace, and love. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ, our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, both now and forever. Amen.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Before our God, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. O God, our Father, at the baptism of Jesus, you proclaimed him your beloved Son and anointed him with the Holy Spirit. Make all who are baptized into Christ faithful to their calling to be your daughters and sons and empower us all with your Spirit through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Be seated, please. Good morning. The first reading today is from Isaiah chapter 42. Here is my servant whom I uphold, my chosen in whom my soul delights. I have put my spirit upon him. He will bring forth justice to the nations. He will not cry or lift up his voice or make it heard in the street. A bruised reed he will not break, 
and a dimly burning wick he will not quench. He will faithfully bring forth justice. He will not grow faint or be crushed until he has established justice in the earth. And the coastlands wait for his teachings. Thus says God the Lord, who created the heavens and stretched them out, who spread out the earth and what comes from it, who gives breath to the people upon it and spirit to those who walk in it. I am the Lord. I have called you in righteousness. I have taken you by the hand and kept you. I have given you as a covenant to the people, a light to the nations, to open the eyes that are blind, to bring out the prisoners from the dungeon, from the prison those who sit in darkness. I am the Lord, that is my name. My glory I give to no other, nor my praise to idols. See, the former things have come to pass, and new things I now declare, before they spring forth. I tell you of them. The word of the Lord. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. Ascribe to the Lord, you gods. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due God's name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The God of glory thunders. The Lord is upon the mighty waters. The voice of the Lord is a powerful voice. The voice of the Lord is a voice of splendor. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedar trees. The Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. The Lord makes Lebanon skip like a calf and Mount Hermon like a young wild ox. The voice of the Lord bursts forth in lightning flashes. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The voice of the Lord makes the oak trees writhe and strips the forests bare. And in the temple of the Lord all are crying glory. The Lord sits enthroned above the flood. The Lord sits enthroned as king forevermore. O Lord, give strength to your people. Give them, O Lord, the blessings of peace. The Lord, the Lord is upon the waters. The second reading is from Acts chapter 10. Peter began to speak to Cornelius and his household. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree, but God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him 
receives forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the third chapter. Then Jesus came from Galilee to John at the Jordan to be baptized by him. John would have prevented him saying, I need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? But Jesus answered him, let it be so now, for it is proper for us in this way to fulfill all righteousness. Then he, then he consented. And when Jesus had been baptized, just as he came up from the water, suddenly the heavens opened to him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting upon him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my Son, the Beloved, with whom I am well pleased. The Gospel of our Lord. To whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Alleluia, alleluia. God's grace and mercy unto you from our Lord and our Savior Jesus the Christ. No, on this first Sunday of Advent, we begin worship by remembering our baptism. And as we think about our baptism, it's like, what does that mean? What does it mean to remember our baptism? I would imagine most here were baptized at a time like I was, I was barely, I wasn't even a month old when I was baptized. So I have no memory as such of my baptism, except for the stories that my parents told, that I was baptized down at the old Our Savior's Lutheran Church at uh, 30th and Izzard by Pastor Peterson, who went on to be uh, the campus pastor at down in Lincoln, at the University in Lincoln for years. Uh, and how my aunt and uncle, um, my dad's favorite brother, um, and his wife were, um, were my sponsors from my dad's side, and my, young, my mother's youngest brother, Lemoyne, was my other sponsor. And we all then went, after I was baptized, we all went up to Hummel Park, I guess, and um, had, they, they had a good feast. And the important thing that I would be told about my baptism also is the name I was given had special meaning to my parents. I was given the name Glenn because that was my dad's he became a very good friend of my dad, and he's the one who helped my dad keep my dad's spirits up when he was at the probably the lowest point in his life as he'd come back from come back from the the war in in France had been injured in at Metz France and was putting his body his body was healing coming back together um, and Glenn would be one of the people who would push him over to the officer's club and who would visit him even though uh, the stench from his osteomyelitis, his bone infection, was overwhelming. And I carry the name, middle name Leroy because that is my mother's favorite brother's name who was killed on the beaches of Anzio in Italy during World War II. And so when I remember my baptism, it's remembering all of that. Remembering that story. 
And I don't know what stories you were told about your baptism, about the name you were given, about the people who were there, about the pastor who baptized you. Um, But all of that is, while significant, not what we're talking about as such when we talk about remembering our baptism. It is significant in that the people who stood there with you at your baptism are to borrow a line, to steal a line from the Fred Rogers movie, the uh, What a Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood. Fred Rogers says he, he invites this guy he is, who's wanting to interview him to just take a moment, take a minute of silence and remember all the people who loved you into existence. I love that line. Think about all the people who loved you into existence. And that when we remember our baptism, when we come and maybe touch the waters of baptism, maybe even make the, the sign of the cross over, place ourselves under the sign of the cross. It's not simply remembering Jesus' baptism nor our own baptism, but it's remembering all those people who loved us into existence. And remembering that love that continues to surround us. By the way, Chris, this is great. I couldn't even tell I was touching the water. It's uh, it's, uh, just the right temperature today. But I would add to Fred Rogers' line that when we come and touch the waters of baptism, we are touching the waters of God's love. And so remembering our baptism is remembering all those people whose love lifts us up. Lifts us up in the midst of our life today. The people who love us and fulfill our lives today. So when we say, and, and we'll have this font here during all of Epiphany, as we talk about our baptism and our calling and how that is important to remember who we are in God's love. And who are the people whom God surrounds us with in love to fill our lives with the love that helps us find joy and peace, courage and strength for, for facing each day. And I know as you're simply walking by for communion and and possibly touching the waters of your baptism here, it's hard to think of all those people. That's why I believe Luther said we needed to begin each day thinking of our baptism. You know, he talked about it in terms of dying to sin and rising to new life. I would say it's about, it is also about then remembering all the people who have loved us into the new life we now enjoy in Christ. As you know, I like to tell stories about my family. Uh, there's one story I've never told, uh, mainly because it's really very humbling to me. 
um, so I have to put on my humble face. Um, but it has to do with a question husbands should never, probably never ask their wives, and that is, why did you marry me? Uh, you know, when I asked Ronnie that question, you know, I thought, you know, I would get some great, great answer like what a stud muffin I was or, yeah. Yeah. or, or my, my intellect, my personality, all those things. Um, but what she said to me was, because I fell in love with your family. And we've continued to be a very blessed family, a joyous family. And I share that story with you this morning because we humbly need to recognize in remembering our baptism that we are all family here. That it is the love that surrounds us here. That gives us, gives us the peace that we share with each other. That gift of God's peace. And so as, as you remember your baptism this day, I invite you to take time as you're passing the peace to really look in the person's eyes and wish them the gift of peace. Because there isn't a more precious gift that I know of that you can give in this world. And that's what we're about is loving each other enough to give that marvelous gift to each other. So during the season of Epiphany, I ask you, yes, remember your baptism. I hope this font here in the center of our worship and the center of our table helps you to do that but I encourage you to do it each and every day. Each and every day is as preparation for Lent, preparation for journeying to the cross as Jesus did after transfiguration. When it became clear to him, that's his, that was his calling. That is what he was meant to do. But spend time in the love of your baptism in the, with the people who surround you with their love and with God's love. As preparation for the journey to the cross and the empty tomb. So remember your baptism each day in the fullness of God's love and of God's peace. Amen.
invite you to join me as we confess our faith together through the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Called together through water and word, let us pray for the church, the world, and all who long to hear God's voice this day. Let us pray. Renewing God, thank you for the gift of baptism. Give your church boldness to proclaim your promises now and tear down obstacles of injustice so that your word of hope reaches the ends of the earth. Lord, in your mercy. Almighty God, we rejoice in the glory of your creation, the beauty of rivers and streams, of glaciers and oceans, of all things that you've made. Bring restoration to your earth and free us from overuse and abuse of those things that you've blessed us with. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of peace, we give thanks for order in the midst of chaos. And though we long for greater justice in this world, raise up wise and compassionate servant leaders so that all might experience now your reign of peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy God, thank you for the powerful healing that we witness through those who care for us, for doctors and nurses, for medical staff, all who look upon those who need healing. And break through those challenges of pain and anguish, now with your voice that comforts. Proclaim hope to all who grieve. Send healing to all who are ill in body, mind, or spirit in any way. We lift up to you this morning, Betty Wilson and Ray Austin. We pray for Stephanie Jensen and Eunice Levesey. And Lord, we lift up to you those loved ones who we hold now in our own hearts. Lord, in your mercy. God of courage, we rejoice in this community of hope, Morning Star Lutheran Church. Strengthen all who are preparing for baptism and renew the faith of sponsors, mentors, parents and grandparents, loved ones, and all who guide the newly baptized in this life of joy. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of hope, unleash your spirit to increase our trust in you. We give thanks for the lives of those saints who inspire us with lives of baptismal witness. Lord, in your mercy. We place now our prayers before you, united in your spirit through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And let us turn and share that peace now with one another.
God's peace be with you, Ron. We continue our worship by sharing our gifts and our offerings. Thou, that 
we might become like Thee. Let Thy great epiphany and may praise Thee ever blessed, God in flesh made manifest. Let us pray. God of all creation, all you have made is good, and your love endures forever. You bring forth bread from the earth and fruit from the vine. Nourish us now with these gifts that we might be for the world signs of your gracious presence in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. By the leading of a star, he was shown forth to all nations. In the waters of the Jordan, you proclaimed him your beloved Son. And in the miracle of water turned to wine, he revealed your glory. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord's table has been prepared, and all are invited. Be seated, please.
please stand as you're able. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. And let us pray together. Faithful God, you have kept your promise to us in this meal, nourishing us with the gift of salvation. Now send your servants forth in peace that we may testify to your goodness and share the hope that is ours in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. And now Christ, the wisdom and power of God and the source of our life together, keep you united in mind and purpose. And the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you forever. Amen. Go forth in peace and let your light shine. Thanks be to God.